Hi, Frank. Welcome to Beyond. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity uh, to have this discussion with you today. So today we're going to talk about data in the cloud. But before we do that, I want to go back to 2010. When you were at Data Domain, I was just starting my first company, Nutanix. From Data Domain to ServiceNow to now Snowflake, you had an amazing run in different parts of technology industry. Uh, what has been the common thread across these and what keeps you coming back? Yeah, it's a little bit like playing professional sports, you know, it's a, it's a very addictive game for uh, people with our temperament. Maybe in some ways it's a bit of a curse and, uh, you know, we obviously uh, enjoy it and uh, we've been in completely different businesses. So, you know, uh, we get very challenged in, in new ways and in every uh, every new adventure and you know, Snowflake's no exception. It's um, it's a super interesting company, which one, which was one of the things that sort of got me sucked back in the game, you know, so. That, that's really amazing. Um, so with this whole track record of success over multiple decades, uh, you clearly are a very, very uh, successful leader. Uh, would you uh, like to share with the audience here uh, some of the leadership lessons that you have learned along the way? Yeah, there's not really a silver bullet, Ajit. There's, uh, there's certainly no playbook. I often get asked that, uh, you know, that question. We're very situational. We're very first principles oriented. But, you know, thematically, I, I would say we're super focused. Uh, we're very high intensity. We're very high urgency. We're maniacally uh, focused and obsessed with our product, our product experience, how we compare uh, competitively, and we're, we're driving the mission uh, every hour of the day. Um, so there's no coasting, there's no presiding, there's no, uh, you know, the, the other thing that we don't do is we're, we're not a self-congratulatory bunch, no victory laps. We kind of live the life of, uh, you know, paranoid, bunch of people and uh you know we we're hand when we join a company you know we're handed a promise uh we're handed a potential and our role is to you know fully deliver and fully exploit uh what we've been been handed and it's uh it's hard to do because you always feel like there's uh there's more to do there's you know things that we're not doing that we should be doing so there's this constant drive to uh to be better in every aspect every dimension of how we do things, and you know, culturally, uh, you know, over time, we become very aligned in the sense that you know people are like-minded, um, and they sort of enjoy and and feel good, you know, in this mode of uh, of execution, and uh, that uh, you know that that's sort of what what goes on day to day. It's uh, it's one foot in front of the other, one brick in the wall after the other. Um, there's there's no silver bullets or uh, passes into the end zone. It's it's not how it works, you know. So I do know that you don't like victory laps, uh, Frank. Um, how do you uh, handle uh, uh, success and failure as you are building these companies over decades? I'm sure there are uh, definitely there is a lot of success, but there is also sometimes failures. How do you handle that, and how do you coach your team? Yeah, failure is actually great for me because that's a, a learning opportunity. It's something that we can pick apart and and take ownership for and say let's not do this again, let's do it this way. Um, so failure is incredibly instructive. Uh, that, that's why we actually embrace it. Uh, success is much harder, right? Because now it's like we're, we're getting happy with ourselves and that's the last thing we want to do. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I also know that you uh, love to create an environment where people can talk about problems very openly uh, with a lot of psychological safety and not worrying about, you know, who's being called out, who made a mistake and all that. Uh, how do you how do you create uh, an environment for a team to operate with so much intensity at the same time with a lot of psychological safety? Yeah, it, it's it's a very good question, and it hasn't uh, always been easy. I remember when we uh, you know, first came into you know, service. Now, um, you know, like ninety days in, our um, our founder said, you know, I, I really don't want to come to the to the executive staff meetings anymore. And I said, why? <laughs> okay, well, I feel like you're indicting everything that I've done. And uh, obviously um, that wasn't the intent um, because we are just very issue oriented and nothing is sacred. And we don't really think about, you know, am I hurting somebody's feelings if I bring up this issue or call out this person? Uh, because that's just not our mindset. You know, we don't talk about people, we talk about issues. 
people can become issues. It's not where we start. We try to be very uh, apolitical, you know, about you know, how we go about our business. And once there is high trust on the team, you can operate that way. When the trust is lacking, it becomes almost uh, impossible. So people need to know it's okay to call each other out, and it's not a, it's not. We're not trying to make anybody look back. It's just, you know, in the interest of the business, you know, we want to put the microscope on, you know, difficult situations and problems and so on, and have intellectually honest conversations about it. And that's 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 what you have to do, rather than pretending that everything is hunky dory, which you know, obviously, is, is never the case. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I think it, it's very hard to create that environment where you have intensity and psychological safety at the same time. But uh, yeah. uh, I'm sure that's a huge part of uh, your success. So I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, and talk about uh, digital transformation uh, that's happening uh, across the world, across all industries. And uh, there's been enough that's been said about how COVID is actually accelerating uh, digital transformation, how companies are doing uh, in six months what it would have taken them three years to do. Uh, what I would love to uh, hear from you is the specific examples of what you have seen some of the best companies uh, your customers or otherwise do um, in digital transformation how they are approaching it how they're leveraging data to drive that digital transformation uh, that would be great to hear yeah you know, the interesting thing about the role that that COVID, uh you know has played is that you know normally you know people on a day-to-day -day basis rely on sort of anecdotal observation of what's going on right just you know looking at the news feed, talking to people, being in meetings, it sort of forms our perception uh, of reality. But when you get massive dislocations, which is what, what COVID was, you can no longer rely on, on anecdotal observation. You, you saw that, right? About back in March and, and April, yep. May, everybody was just like, holy cow, what is going on? So now we realize data is going to be the way we're going to parse our realities. It's, it's how we are going to understand it it's how we're going to act on it. So the need for data to understand what was happening just went up, you know, in just in leaps and bounds because the dislocation, uh, you know, was so great. And, you know, as we got, you know, uh, so in other words, it, it sort of activate our, our, our data culture, our data awareness, uh, our, our data appreciation, I should say. I mean, for a long time, you know, we used our, our respective platforms, you know, for, for, for running reports and populating dashboards and, you know, now it's like well, digital transformation really means uh, you know, data driving operations as opposed to data informing people. There's a big difference, right? Because we're trying to uh, use data to describe behaviors and outcomes and relationships and then, you know, massively scale that programmatically. In other words, we're disintermediating processes end to end. That's really what digital transformation uh, means to us. It's a term that gets thrown around a lot. And um, it means different things to different people, but to us, it means an end-to-end -end, uh, programmatic process that is driven by data every every step of the way. Makes sense, that's, that's really well put. And, uh, and in fact, uh, I think that uh, not only just businesses with COVID, uh, the whole society has been exposed to data at a scale that was never done before. I think more than a billion people for the first time uh, saw a chart in their life to see how this uh, pandemic is uh, is growing and testing that is happening and survival rates and so on and so forth. So uh, there has been a lot of pain, but uh, I really do believe that uh, society at large will become more, uh, more fact-driven, more data-driven. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the partnership that uh, we have, Snowflake and ThoughtSpot. Uh, and I think uh, at the very core, both the companies are focused on uh, similar uh, missions to just deliver more value from data. Uh, at Snowflake, you are focused on uh, bringing down the silos that exist across uh, different parts of organizations, um, even uh, between companies and their customers and partners. And at ThoughtSpot, we are bringing uh, down the silos that exist between uh, people and insights and data, and then eventually enabling them to uh, drive actions. Uh, in fact, um, uh, uh, you recognized uh, the value that we are creating for our joint customers by awarding us the technology partner of the year. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, I'd love to uh, hear what you think uh, uh, is, the, is the part of the joint solution that our joint customers love the most. Uh, what makes this partnership special? 
Yeah. So, you know, you know, first off, uh, you know, what, what Snowflake did for, uh, for data management and data operations is just really uh, allow people to operate at cloud scale and take advantage of, of, of cloud architectures. Uh, in other words, workload execution was really the reason why, you know, the first, you know, however many customers, they, they saw that, you know, both the scale of data as well as the, uh, the, the the pure performance characteristics and then concurrent execution, those were all the things that 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 brought people to Snowflake to begin with. And as, as you pointed out, um, the other vector is really in terms of being able to access data across silos and across boundaries uh, and so on. But we're very much the enabler. Uh, I mean, we are not, you know, in other words, you know, what, what ThoughtSpot you know brings to. Snowflake and what, what Snowflake brings to ThoughtSpot, it's a very symbiotic relationship that benefits uh, us both, right? Because for, for ThoughtSpot to really shine, you know, A, we, we got to have the scale and the performance. And, and number two, you know, we have to be able to transcend data silos to really, uh, you know, fully unlock the potential, uh, you know, cross data because people get closer and closer to business outcomes. Uh, boundaries between data silos are completely uninteresting to uh, you know to to analysts and, and 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 data scientists. And I think ThoughtSpot brings a really interesting perspective. I mean, you've rocketed to through the top of the heap in a in a very short period of time because you were very very focused on your unique value added. And I love the uh, you know the uh, the natural interface uh, that you provide. And all the all the intelligence that you bring uh, to people uh, querying data, and I, uh, our people are very excited about ThoughtSpot in general because it's just off the beaten path of what people typically see in terms of you know uh, products out there. Um, so that's that's the reason why I think it's been going well, and, and we're, uh, we're we're very hopeful uh, you know of our future together as well. So. No, definitely, definitely. And in fact, we have uh, our joint customers uh, like Hulu who are using our joint solution uh, to drive better segmentation of audience to understand the engagement with various uh, pieces of contents that they produce and and uh, grow their uh, user base and also retain the users they have. So it's been really fascinating to see how uh, both our uh, stacks coming together is delivering this amazing next generation cloud platform. Uh, that our customers are uh, leveraging. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the future. You know, last uh, decade really has been transformational. So much more capabilities available to uh, everyone now uh, with cloud and AI and machine learning and, and the way we are leveraging data has fundamentally changed in the last decade. Uh, as, you, as you look forward, and I know that uh, uh, predicting the future is 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 a, sometimes a high risk thing. But from where you sit, uh, where do you think the industry is going to be uh, in the next five to ten years? Well, there's a couple of big things that, that that we try and and accomplish. You know, one is that we arrive at having real cloud data platforms. What what that means is, I don't need to have ten different solutions to be able to handle the range of workloads that I need to address. Uh, this is really important because that, that fragmentation that, that has existed has just been the bane of our, uh, our existence. So, you know, a big part of our focus is to broaden and deepen uh, in all aspects of workload execution in, in data management because then customers have a fighting chance of, of really bringing all their data management, their data operations, um, you know, onto a single platform. The word platform is important because it really implies that it's, it's, it's broadly multi purpose as opposed to a tool, which is, you know, it tends to be, you know, single purpose or really restricted in its purposes. So that's one, uh, and that would be a huge thing because historically, you know, we, we've not been able uh, to get there. We've had, a, you know, a lot of different things running, you know, side by side and we still do to this day. Um, but the second thing, and this is, this is sort of, you know, transcends almost everything. Um, you know, we have infrastructure clouds, you know, obviously, you know, storage and servers. I mean, we have massive uh, options now in, in terms of, of using infrastructure uh, on demand, uh, which is great. And there's huge amounts of data, uh, you know, inside, uh, you know, those infrastructure clouds, not, not just in the different clouds, but different cloud regions and, uh, and so on. Then there's a ton, tons of data, you know, inside um, hundreds, if not thousands of, you know, SaaS applications. And then there's the whole, you know, legacy on-premise. So data lives in a, in a million places. And we have, as an industry, not been capable of creating a notion of a data cloud. In other words, one place where we can go, where we can effortlessly and frictionlessly uh, blend and join and combine 
data. It's just been uh, data operations has just been absolutely hardcore heavy lifting. Just, just, just very. That's where most of the the spend and the, and the energy goes in um, in in our business. So our goal is to bring about you know a data universe, uh, you know where we can go and we can just plug in and we can bring about you know relationships, um, you know with other data providers. We can make data available. We can consume data from other sources, and you know we can do that with you know without doing the heavy lifting of copying and replicating. And so on. So data cloud has not existed in the history of computing, and it's certainly our goal to make a huge dent in that and to to bring that about. And we think it will unleash powerful um, data network effects because after a while, people realize, well, you know, you might have a good workload execution platform, but you know, the other reasons that that I'm here is because of the data that I need to be able to access, right? So uh, data network effects will, will start to play a real role, uh, you know, in future, whereas historically, you know, database companies have not cared about what the data was. There was no content vector, if you will, to those platforms. You know. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. That, that vision of the data cloud is, is extremely powerful. And uh, I think it also uh, is going to really accelerate uh, uh, the vision that we've had, uh, which is, uh, that uh, companies of the future, the analytics team won't be running uh, report factories. You know, historically they've just been building reports after reports, but when you need to make a decision, none of the reports is useful. Uh, we think that uh, if you make it uh, easier and uh, more natural for people to just consume what they need when they have an answer, they get to it. Uh, that is the transformation that uh, will uh, definitely be accelerated with data cloud. And we are seeing that with our customers as they're modernizing their data platform, they're also looking at modern analytics uh, uh, technologies and, and moving uh, beyond uh, what they've done with the dashboarding and visualization. So uh, very excited about uh, where the industry is going and where, the, where our partnership is going. Uh, Frank, uh, this was a really, really uh, fascinating uh, chat. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts. Yeah, likewise, my, my pleasure, Ajit, uh, yeah, enjoyed the conversation. Thank you.